Good evening, Facebook Live. It is Calvina Banner here with you with Creating Awareness for Christ. It is, let's see, ah, 8.40 Central Standard Time, 8.40 p.m. Central Standard Time on Monday, September 26th. So I am fully aware of what is going on tonight. I am competing with Monday night football. Oh my goodness. I am also competing with the um, presidential debate. <laughs> and here I am creating awareness for Christ, um, messaging live, a message from one high. So for those of us who are joining Facebook live, I thank you. I definitely thank you for tuning in with me tonight, a little bit later than usual, but nonetheless, we are here. Um, also, for those who are joining on, um, or I shouldn't say joining, but replaying this message, I also thank you as well. So I always want to say thanks before I start the message, just to let you know that I appreciate you. I appreciate the support. And furthermore, after this message post, please share it. Please share that um, you know, creating words of Christ goes live on Mondays and, and, and every Monday for the most part. So again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Also, please be interactive with this message. You can always chat. You can always release the emojis as we go along because it's just not about me talking to you. I like to feel and hear uh, what you have to say as well. So since I am just getting started, I will acknowledge the one person that I see that has come on. Mr. Smith, James, thank you so much for joining me live. I definitely appreciate it. Definitely appreciate it. Hope you stick around for the whole time. I know that you're a football fan, so you're probably, you know, watching me, watching them. It's all good, though. I appreciate it nonetheless. <laughs> all right. So, um, shoot, I'm looking at my video and I noticed that my light is a little dim and I realized I forgot to turn on my other light over there. So I hope everything's clear. Everything can be seen. So God be the glory. We are going to believe the best and we are going to go forward anyhow. So, all right, here we are. September 26th, Monday, Central Standard Time of 8.40 p.m. Again, thanks again. So we're going to go ahead and get started while I have your attention. Amen. So the title of this message, call him up call him up. Who am I talking about? Call him up. Yes, of course I'm talking about God. Call him up. Hey, Ma, I'm going to go ahead and speak to you since you said, hey, hey, thank you for joining in live. Appreciate that. Um, so yeah, so call him up. So uh, when I thought about the title of this message and thinking about the theme of what I'm going to be talking about tonight, I thought about that song. Um, if you confess the Lord, call him up. <laughs> so um it is very important that we call him up. And what does it mean to call him up? That means to talk to him, to pray, um, the long and short of it. So I want to ask all of us a question tonight. All of us a question tonight. How much time do we spend in prayer? How much time do we spend in prayer? That's rhetorical. Or you can answer if you like, be honest. How much time we spend in prayer? Um, but just something to think about, really, something really to think about. And my hope is that most of us will say, you know, plenty of time, all the time. I pray without ceasing or I'm trying to get there or, you know, I, I know I want to get better in that in that discipline because that's where we all need to be. We should always be praying, never fainting, praying without ceasing. This is very much a spiritual discipline that we cannot live without as children of God. If we are walking with God, we have got to be talking with God. All right. So let's not neglect this area of our spiritual walk with God. Okay. Um, certainly prayer is definitely related to the amount of victory that we see in our lives. I am a living witness to that. So when I say victory as well, I don't want you to think that I mean everything is going to be going good, everything is going to be well, everything is going to be perfect. But when I say prayer is related to the amount of victory that we have in our lives, what I mean is this. When we stay connected to God, when we are communicating with him, talking to him, and he's talking to us, our responses to everyday life, situations in our life are different. We have a different type of peace. We have a different type of understanding, a different type of flow in life, which 
will in turn make us be more victorious overall. Why? Because we are not um, sad and sullen and sulking around like those who may not be connected to God in prayer. So that's what I mean. We definitely are more victorious the more time that we spend in prayer. Amen. So in the beginning, I, I you know gave you a little a musical interlude, right? Call them up if you confess the Lord. Um, this also reminds me of another song, an older hymn. What a friend we have in Jesus. How many of us know that? Hit me, give me some likes. How many of us know that hymn? What a friend we have in Jesus. Yes, yes, one of the most popular ones. But there is a stanza in there, a couple of lines in this song that really, really speak to us. It should speak to us, okay? Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. My God, my God, the writer of that song is so, so right on point with that. Let's, let's listen to that one more time. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Meaning, we give up peace. We, we let it go. We leave it on the table. What needless pain we bear. That means we kind of welcome the pain. Basically, we, we, hey, might as well come. Give me the pain. That's all right. We'll, we'll bear it needlessly. We don't have to. Why do we do this? All because we do not carry everything. I mean everything to God in prayer. Mm, 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 mm. I love that. I love that. So this song is very comforting. These lines in this song is very comfort comforting and it is also scriptural. Also lines up with the word because a song shouldn't just feel good. It should be scriptural. <laughs> um, we need to carry everything, everything to God in, pr in prayer. Why? Because he gives us that peace that passes all understanding. He comforts us in our time of pain. Amen. So he is welcoming us, amen, to his throne, to his bosom, so that we don't have to be bearing pain needlessly and so that we don't have to be walking unpeacefully, if that's a word. Amen. So let us learn, let us discipline ourselves to learn to take everything to God in prayer. Let me say this. God cares about everything concerning you and me too, but I'm talking to y'all. <laughs> God, he's concerned about everything about you, everything concerning you, he cares about. So everything that is on your heart, anything that is on your spirit, anything that is on your mind, you can take it to him in prayer. Amen. Don't be afraid of that. Don't be afraid of that. He wants that. Amen. Everything to God in prayer. All right. So when we pray, when we pray, there's a couple of things. Well, there's more than a couple of things that happen, but there's two things I'm going to point out that happens. What, when we pray, what are we doing when we pray? All right. When we pray, we are acknowledging God, right? We are acknowledging him. As a matter of fact, Proverbs 3 and 6 tells us in all of our ways, acknowledge him and he will direct our paths. Excuse me. So that's the first thing, acknowledging him, um, understanding, knowing that we need him. Amen. Acknowledging him. God, I need you. <laughs> no doubt about it. My God, I need you. As a matter of fact, I've um, become more uh, habitual with the thing of when I wake up in the morning, first thought is to God. Lord, before I turn my body and put my feet on the ground, this day belongs to you. Do y'all know that's praying? <laughs> that's praying. Acknowledging him first thing in the morning. I mean, that's what I do. Not necessarily what the Lord may be leading you to do, but that's just an example. Amen. We have to acknowledge him that we need him. And once we do that, he says he will direct our paths. A lot of times, back to the uh, what a friend we have in Jesus, him. A lot of times we are bearing pain because we have no direction. Amen. But once we acknowledge God, amen, in all of our ways, we acknowledge him. He says he will direct our paths. You know how it is, y'all. When we be confused, oh, I don't know what to do in this situation. What should I do? How should I do it? Wavering back and forth, to and fro. Acknowledge God. Acknowledge God. 
and he will direct your path. I didn't make that up. He said that right there. Proverbs 3 and 6. Check it out for yourself. Check it out for yourself. <laughs> Amen. So that's the first thing, acknowledging him. Amen. The second point, the second thing I want to highlight is when we pray, we are allowing God access. Oh my, oh my. We are allowing God access to our lives, in our lives, about our lives, through our lives. We are allowing him access. What do I mean by that, right? Access. You're probably thinking, really? God is big. He got access to everything. He is the creator. He is sovereign. He is all that. All of that is very true. He is, he is sovereign. He is the creator. He knows us and this and that. However, God is so awesome, so caring, so loving that he has also blessed us with free will. Glory to God. <laughs> free will. Glory to God. So the caveat to that free will is that we have the opportunity to decide to choose to want God or not. Hmm. Ever think of that, right? We have the opportunity to choose whether we want God involved in our lives or not. Wow. Wow. And prayer does just that. Prayer allows God to work. Glory to God. Allows God to work on our behalf. Oh, hallelujah. Don't y'all miss that now. Besides acknowledging him, prayer allows access. God wants access to our lives. He wants permission. He's not going to force us and browbeat us, amen, into uh, wanting a relationship with him, amen. That is our choice, our decision. So when we pray, we're saying, God, we need you. We want you. <laughs> Hallelujah. In our lives, we want you to act on our behalf. So we cannot assume that it's an automatic thing that God is just working on our behalf. No, we have got to invite him in through prayer, y'all. Y'all have got to get that. We have got to get that. Amen. That is an understanding that we need. He will um, do what he says he's going to do once we allow him. Amen. When we pray his will in our lives, he will do what he says he's going to do. But he needs that access. He needs us to say, we need you. We want you, God. Come on in. Amen. So, yeah. So let's make room for him to be in our lives. Amen. I thank God for free will, because then that just shows, um, you know, our love for him, our affection. You know, we're not robots and where he programmed us in to, to desire to him and to love him. He gave us that free will to where we want to out of the out of the fullness of our heart, out of his love for us first. Amen. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. Hallelujah. And because he first loved me, I love him. Praise God. So that's the desire. That's the relationship. So those are a couple of things that happen, um, you know, when we pray. So what do we get when we pray? Okay, this list could go on for evers and evers. <laughs> so we ain't got time to get all into it now. But I'm going to highlight a couple of things, maybe about three points that we get, uh, what we get out of prayer. Amen. And um, I want to be careful not, you know, uh, watch my words when I say, what do we get out of prayer? You know, because we're not necessarily praying to get, 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 get. Okay, first and foremost, prayer should be about relationship. Mm hmm. Relationship with him, with God, the father. Hallelujah. That's what our primary um, goal should be through prayer. Amen. Is, is growing in relationship. Seek first the kingdom of God, seeking his face. Amen. And all these other things will be added. But thank God for all the other things. So <laughs> that makes us happy, too. So I noticed that someone said peace. I'm going to start there then because that was one of my points. Thanks, sister. Thank you, Sherry. Peace. Yes, God. Peace is one of the most wonderful things that we get when we pray. Oh, my God. How many of us know there is nothing like having peace of mind? Nothing like having peace of mind. Oh, my gosh. Right? I know about it. Philippians 4 and 6 tells us this. It says, don't worry about anything. Mm. You know, when we get to worrying, our minds get to going. Caddy wampus, bonkers, right? Don't worry about anything. Instead, 
pray about everything. Oh, when you, oh, mm, mm, mm. scriptures get me excited. Can't y'all tell? Because when you really slow down and you, and you, and you read them, <laughs> amen, you get so much out of it. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all the things that he has done. That is the New Living Translation of Philippians 4, um, 4 and 6. And I love it. I love it. So don't worry about nothing but pray. And, and um, I'll tell you what, whew, I, I, I apply this scripture to a lot of circumstances in my life because a lot of times I can find myself in a bit of worry, whether it be about work, whether it be my, about children, my family, things like that. I find myself, you know, starting to worry. And God will bring that to my remembrance. Philippians 4 and 16. Don't you worry now. I done told you. <laughs> you know, God got to talk to us like that sometimes. I done told you. Don't worry. But what did I tell you to do? Pray. Mm. And then right there, I stopped right in my tracks. Lord, you know what? You know my heart. You know exactly what I need. I, and I started praying. Praise God. And the peace of God that passes all understanding, which is the next verse, talks about this. The peace of God. The peace of God. That's that peace of God. That transcends all understanding will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. My God. So don't worry, y'all. God is going to give you the peace. Yes, God says, I got this. You know what I mean? The funny part is, you know, we're going to go through a lot in life. You know what I'm saying? There's going to be so many situations where we don't know the outcome, how it's going to end up. We don't know what the end's going to be. But that's okay. That's okay. We don't have to know what's going to happen. As long as we know the one who does know <laughs> that's going to ha what's going to happen, and that's God. Hallelujah. So stay connected to him. Praise God for that peace. Amen. All right. So another thing that we get from God um, when we pray, we get answers. Hmm. We get answers. All right. Psalms 138 and 3. Again, this is the New Living Translation. It says this. As soon as I pray... As soon as I pray, I like that. As soon as I pray, you answer me. Mm. You encourage me by giving me strength. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let, let's take that piece by piece here. All right. It says, as soon as I pray, you give me answers. Amen. Now, let's look at that for a minute. Now, you may be like, man, no, nah, I've been praying for something for a long time. and I ain't got no answer yet. <laughs> Could be the case. Very well could be the case, but you know what your answer could be at that particular time? The peace that we were just talking about. The peace that we were just talking about. Giving you the strength. Because the, the, the caboose part of this scripture says this here. It says, you encourage me by giving me strength. Mm. So although God may not have given you that the direct answer to the question, to the thing that you're praying about, he is answering your prayer by encouraging you and by strengthening you in the meantime. Do y'all understand that that's an answer? Praise God. You know what? Because sometimes I go to God in prayer about something. I get up. I'm not totally clear on that thing, but I got a peace that he's going to deliver. He's going to answer the prayer. I just got to keep seeking. And that's him strengthening us. That's that answer that we need at that time. We might need strength at that time rather than that exact answer to that thing. So we get answers because that's what the scripture says right here. As soon as we pray, as soon as we pray, you answer me. And he answers. Trying to reconnect. Can y'all hear me still? It says my connection is weak. I thought I went out for a minute. To God be the glory. I think I'm back. Bam, back. All right, here we go. Answers. That's where I left off. We get answers. Amen. The strength that we need, the peace that we need, we need anything that we need. Um, God is there to give us. So I love the caboose of that scripture. Psalm 138 and three, where it says that gives us strength, gives, um, encourages us. Amen. And patience too. Oh my gosh. Woo. So much, so much. I know Reverend Shaq, right? He ain't going, he ain't getting nowhere in this. You know how God do. He always wins. Praise God. <laughs> All right. So the last thing I'm going to mention here, where it comes to what we get <clears throat> when we pray, um, increased faith. Mm, I like this one. Increased faith. Matthew 21 and 22 says this. You can pray for anything. And if you have faith, you will receive it. All right, let's do that again. You can pray for anything. And if you have faith, you will receive it. So I like this. 
because of this. So let's say you're a beginner, you know what I'm saying? You, you, you're, you're, you're newly saved and you, yeah, you don't, you don't quite understand it all or whatever. Right. But let's say you, you just, you hang on to this scripture right here. You're like, all right, what I got to lose. I'm gonna go ahead and try this. So you pray for something. God answers, delivers, gives you what you need, whatever the case may be. And you like, whoa, yes, God is good. He answered my prayer. He did this and that. Guess what? Your faith barometer has come up just a bit. It has just come up just a bit. So now you can testify to somebody else say, uh-huh, I'm telling you, prayer works. Prayer does something. You know what I'm saying? So now you are more willing to go to God in prayer because you know what he can do. He is faithful, y'all. So praying, oh my God, praying will increase our faith in him and what he's able to do and how he's able to soothe us and how he's able to give us peace, how he's able to give us understanding. Amen. Oh my goodness. So increase faith. That's a big one, y'all. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh my goodness. He wants us to taste and see how good he is. Amen. So please, 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 my brothers and my sisters. Yes, indeed. Let's work on that. Let's work on that. Increasing our prayer lives. You know, some of us might be, you know, I mean, just praying all the time, like Jesus, hours, going in the morning for hours and praying. Some of us may not be quite there. Whatever the case may be, we always can talk to God more. All right. We always can talk to him more. And also, let me point out this too. Um, when we're praying, don't forget, yes, we're talking to him, but let us Always pause to listen to him. Amen. Let's listen to the word that he may have for us. All right. Now, I also just want to give out an example of a model prayer um, for those of us who may um, have been saved for some time now. We know it as the Lord's Prayer. And it's in Matthew uh, chapter 6, verses 9 through 13. Now, we know our Father who art in heaven. Let me say this too. This is a model prayer for us. Amen. We don't necessarily have to repeat these words verbatim, but it gives us a model of how, how we should pray, the things we should pray for, his will to be done. We should be praying for forgiveness. We should be praying to forgive others. We should be praying for the temptations that are about us. We should be praying for the kingdom to, you know, things like that. Those, that's the model. Amen. So I just, I, um, Encourage all of us to, you know, ask God, you know, how can I apply this type of prayer to my life? Amen. Um, to where it's effective and, and it's praying your will, God. You know, it's very important that we pray his will, his word back to him. Amen. Because his word, as he says in his word, will not return to him void. So it's important for us to learn it so that we can pray it to him and so that we get answers because his word won't come back to him void. Amen. So let's do that. I'm going to end with this uh, this uh, saying that I actually learned in my church. It's probably been around longer than that. But however, the saying goes this, as it pertains to prayer and um, our lives, amen, much prayer, much power, little prayer, little power, no prayer, no power. That is in relationship to our lives. If we pray a lot, we're going to have a lot of power in life. <laughs> If we pray a little bit, we're going to have a little bit of power, all right? If we don't pray, don't expect none. <laughs> don't expect no power, amen? So I'm just saying, it, it, you know how I am. I just want to encourage, encourage, encourage. I'm just encouraging all of us. Let's just increase our prayer life, increase our prayer time. This Again, as I said when I started, this is a spiritual discipline that we cannot be skimpy. We can't be skimpy on prayer is a one important in our relationship with God. Amen. All right. So call him up, y'all. Call him up and tell him what you want. <laughs> I love the song. I love the song. Um, but just don't be calling him up to tell him what you want. Call him up to be in relationship with him. Amen. <laughs> All right, y'all. I am done here. Again, I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. Y'all live viewers for sticking with me. I love y'all hearts, y'all likes, all that good stuff. Y'all just don't know. It really, really, um, it encourages me and it encourages the ministry. So again, like I said, please share this message. Y'all send it out to, to your friends, your friends list. 
Um, if you believe that they will, if you've been blessed by it, somebody else more than likely will be blessed by the word of God as well. Amen. All right. Well, y'all enjoy the rest of your Monday evening. God bless all of you. I love you. And I will see you next week live on Facebook. Bye, everybody.